Life like a wayfarer journeying Like a stranger on his way back home <coughs> My respected ulama Beloved brothers, honorable elders, young friends, my mothers and my sisters. <clears throat> Allah wa ta'ala had given us such a great opportunity within this life. The opportunity which He had given us <clears throat> is for us to make that covenant with Allah in this very short amount of time we have passed through this world of fitna and fasad and to me Allah wa ta'ala in such a way where Allah is happy with us he had given us this opportunity and he has given us this opportunity Allah Allah wa ta'ala had inspired or has inspired insan with two particular ways Either we choose a path which is wholesome, which is good, earning the pleasure of Allah wa ta'ala, and then as a result Allah would admit that person into Jannah. Or on the contrary, if a person makes amal, makes practice, does those things which Allah wa ta'ala dislikes, this would be a means of the ghadab, the anger, the wrath of Allah, which would ultimately cause a person to be flung headlong into the fire of Jahannam. So he has given us this opportunity in life where we choose one of two ways. And we see in and around our societies, our environments, our masajid, the people who are more prone to becoming victims or those people who are more tempted in particular are those people which you and I would refer to as the youth everyone gets affected as you pass by a blacksmith you're bound to feel some heat you're bound to smell some smoke but the youngsters in particular the youth in particular they feel a slight sense more because those desires are at the absolute pinnacle point when a person is in their youth this is why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam he mentions this one hadith and he mentions sab'atun yudhilluhum allahu fi dhillihi yawma la dhilla illa dhilluhu Allah tabarak wa ta'ala will order that all the souls to be raised on the day of Qiyamah and he will give shade to seven types of people underneath his throne on the day of Qiyamah where there will be no shade other than the shade of Allah from amongst those seven categories of people Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam points out the first type of person Imamun Adil a just ruler a just ruler the second type of person who he mentions shabun nasha'a fi ibadatillah that youth in particular who was nurtured who read himself was surrounded in the ibadat and the worship and the obedience of Allah because those desires are at their most the wants are at their most they're being bombarded with all kinds of images all kinds of thoughts if going against those thoughts going against those images going against those desires one stems their desire and makes ibadat of Allah in their youth then Allah will take them out from the people of the day of Qiyamah and put them underneath his arsh so valued is this youth it doesn't mean we neglect the rest of the people because there are five more that are mentioned in the hadith وَرَجُلٌ قَلْبُهُ مُعَلَّقٌ بِالْمَسَاجِدِ 
So those people who are thinking we are not youth anymore, so then how do we get this great opportunity? Then the hadith further entails that that particular person whose heart is forever connected with the masjid, when they leave the masjid, they think, Ya Allah, I wish I was back in the masjid. May Allah Ta'ala make our hearts like this, brothers. That when we are away from the masjid, we desire to be back in the masjid. And the only example we can equate it to is like taking a fish out of water. The fish would feel very uncomfortable because the climate is not appropriate for that fish. Similarly, the case of a Muslim, similar the case of a mu'min. We should feel that want, that desire, that talab, that drive to be in the masjid when we are outside the masjid. It further states, وَرَجُلًا تَحَابًا فِي اللَّهِ اِجْتَمَعَا عَلَيْهِ وَتَفَرَّقَا عَلَيْهِ that two people or two types of people will gather and they will meet, gather and depart only for the sake of Allah. <coughs> only for the sake of Allah. Further mentions, وَرَجُلٌ دَعَتْهُ إِمْرَأَةٌ ذَاتُ حُسْنٍ وَجَمَالٍ فَقَالَ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهِ The students in the universities, the students in the colleges, the young men and women who are at work in the environment, pay attention to this next category of people which will be underneath the arsh on the day of Qiyamah. That particular man, and remember the hadith where he mentions Rajul, it does not exclude the sisters. If someone was in this predicament, then one has the fullest optimism in Allah has mercy, that if a sister was also in the same predicament, Allah would also put them underneath the arsh as well. But that particular person, that particular man, I'm mentioning man, because the word of the hadith entails man. دَعَتْهُ إِمْرَأَةٌ ذَاتُ حُسْنٍ وَجَمَالٍ a man is confronted by a woman who is bedazzling in her beauty. And she entices him. And what does he say? He refuses and says, I only fear in my Allah. It doesn't mention that this is done a number of times. It mentions that this is only if done once. Da'athu imra'atun. It doesn't mention anything in the hadith which will indicate that it has to be done a great number of times or numerous on numerous occasions, different climates. If one person can refrain at that point in time, when the desire is at its most, when no one is looking, you know that now I can fulfill my desire in a haram way. But a person stops for a moment and says, No, in actual fact, I fear my Allah. Allah will give that person shade underneath his arsh on the day of Qiyamah as well. To complete the hadith, two more types of people. رَجُلٌ تَصَدَّقَ بِصَدَقَةٍ فَأَخْفَاهَا حَتَّى لَا تَعْلَمَ شِمَالُ مَا تُنْفِقُ يَمِنُ Such a person gives sadaqah in such a way where the left hand does not even know what the right hand has spent. Meaning they give sadaqah in such a quiet manner. They give sadaqah for a way that will only please Allah. Optimism in Allah's mercy, not hoping for the reward of the people, the praise of the people. But last but not least in this particular hadith, before we go on to obviously the main topic. رَجُلٌ ذَكَرُ اللَّهَ خَالِيًا فَفَاضَتْ عَيْنًا Another type of person that will be underneath the arsh on the day of Qiyamah will be that person who remembers Allah in seclusion to such an extent that tears start flowing from their eyes. May Allah Taala make us from amongst one of these people. Now because I mentioned this hadith because it will serve and someone can fit somewhere within this hadith, whether you are old, whether you are young, but concentrating on particular for the youth. We are in very testing times. We are in a time full of fitna. We are in a time full of fasad and difficulty. And very rarely do you come across youngsters who say that they are not affected. The environment is such that it has this pull. Wherever we go, even if we are walking in the streets, it is difficult to preserve that iman. 
But one fitna which is apparent in our zamana today. One very big problem which we find in and amongst the ummah is we have those types of people who at large are victims to the consuming and the taking of alcohol and drugs. It's the norm now. It's considered to be the norm. Where Allah Taala mentions in the Quran about khamr, you could translate khamr to be alcohol. But Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he describes khamr, mentions khamr in the following words. Al-khamru ma khamar al-aql. What is khamr? Let's take a step back and explain why we are talking about this. Because when we read the Quran Kareem, it doesn't mention anywhere about the word drugs. It will mention the word khamr. It will mention the word khamr. And khamr because it has a wider meaning than what some people today like to narrow it down to. That's what we are explaining. So khamr is what? The Quran mentions khamr. But Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he mentions al khamru ma khamr al aq If anything can cloud the faculty of thinking, then this is referred to as khamr. In Arabic, the word for the, we refer to as the dubatta, the orni, we refer to as the khimar. Khimar. Because it clouds the head. It covers the head. And I bumped into a couple of people on different occasions now. Where one or some people like to argue this fact. One brother said to me, Show me in the Quran where it says you can't smoke weed and I'll give it up. This is what his exact words were. And I was, this was said a num- number of years ago. At that time, I had not had the privilege to study in the environment of the madaris and the shuyukh. So I could not give an adequate answer and an adequate jawab. But this much we understood, alhamdulillah, that because it was considered as something bad, and I, I argued that then, that well, it, you don't remain in your senses. So how can you argue for something to be good or something to be permissible? Alhamdulillah, as we come and studied later on, we understood that where the Qur'an Kareem is talking about khamr in Qur'an, the khasiyah or one of the qualities of alcohol is that it causes this temperament to change, the thinking to change. And this is also found in a number of drugs. So anything with those characteristics, those capabilities, or that possibi- that thing which can cloud the faculty of thinking, would also be in the same hukum and the same command as khamr. And it's become, wallah, so arm. It's become so widespread, where people are just taking drugs on a regular basis. You know there was a time when our youngsters would come home, the parents would ask them, you smell of alcohol, where have you been? What are you being up to? And it was a kind of stigma, where Muslims would not be associated in and around the pubs. It would be something of great disrespect, especially amongst the Asian community as such, forgive me for being crude, because they say by izzaqa masla, you know, this is a problem for izza, so you, whatever happens, you have to stay away from this. Haram is haram, whether you're from Jamaica, Africa, North America, South America, haram is haram. But this was something which was really emphasized, that so as well as being guna, and as well as being haram, this is a masala of izzat. So the parents also would also be very harsh on this as well. But now comes another new era, where people are consuming drugs. And parents can acknowledge this as well. We are seeing our youngsters walking in, red eye. You can see that they're smelling of smoke. But we turn a blind eye. Our turning a blind eye is a silent approval to their guna and their sin. We don't encourage them, but it's turning a blind eye. 
It's as if it's not existing. Whereas that child before, that youngster before, and may I hasten to add boys and girls, before would feel some skepticism, would feel this mixed emotion that I should not consume alcohol and then go to my house. And in the event they did, they would take the relevant precautions to go in such a way which they would not be clocked out, as to use simple language. But now this zamana, where people are consuming drugs on a wide scale, it's kind of looked past. Now the harms of that are numerous. Because when a person becomes drug dealers or drug, uh, drug addicts, the majority of time when you question the people how they reach from their stage of 1 to 10 in terms of being addicted, they say we started off on some mild substances. You know, some of us we gather together, choose the cigarette, and then that's how our ball started. And then they start moving on to something different. On the, we- on the weekend, people chip in and they, 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 they contribute ma'adallah to some eighths and some teenths and some quarters and some ounces. And then they start smoking away. Until a time comes where now they start the raving and the shaving, then now the other stuff comes involved. I'm not saying for one moment that the consuming of cannabis or jaras or marijuana or hashish or skunk or weed or, or black or dope or whatever you want to call it is permissible, is haram in its entirety. And that's the thing. People like to give it a funny little name and argue its permissibility. This same youngster said, he goes, show me where it says skunk in Quran. Show me where it says... And obviously you're not going to find the exact words. You're not going to find everything in black and white in Quran. It gives you usul, it gives you a principle. And that principle is then carried out further. But the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explains to us, اجتنبوا كل مسكر Abstain and stay away from everything which has the potential of intoxicating the brain. <coughs> stay away from everything. كل مسكر خمر وكل خمر حرام Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions again, everything which intoxicates is khamr, and anything which is khamr is ultimately haram. Therefore we come to this conclusion, everything which intoxicates is haram, declared from Qur'an, declared from hadith. And that's what happens. We fool ourselves that it's okay or I'm, I'm just taking it casually, minor, here and there perhaps. I only take a small amount, I don't exactly become, I don't start pulling whiteies. I don't become legless, I don't lose my senses. مَا أَسْكَرَ كَثِيرُهُ فَقَلِيلُهُ حَرَامٌ Nabi Wasallam beautifully points out again in another hadith. If something intoxicates in a large amount, then small amounts of that thing would also be haram. So you can just say, I'm just smoking a little bit, a zoo, a little thing on the weekend. Youngsters, Ajib, driving around in cars, blazing the music, listening to this hip hop music, jungle music, garage music, house and garage, bopping, stepping, showing themselves as a rude boy in society, walking around with zoots in their mouths, zoots behind their ears. What has the Muslim Ummah come to? That same youngster which Allah Taala kept faculties of hidayat, he could have been a guide, she could have been a guide. Allah put in the potential of all people to do good deeds, to do bad deeds. We chose that way of life, we chose that evil, we chose that haram, we chose those drugs. If only we preserve that small amount of time we had in our youth years, Wallahi, on the day of Qiyamah, Allah would have blessed us so much. But rather the motives are used behind making the money, pushing things in, in society. Ajib, I don't know which words to select. The masjid was not a place to really address these things in this manner. But we've come to a time when we can't shy away. We can't shy away. Obviously, keeping in mind the, the words we select, we have to be very, very careful. We are in the house of Allah. It was never thought that this predicament would come so vast even within the Ummah. People selling their Iman. It mentions in the hadith that a person that consumes intoxicants, أَخْرَجَ نُورُ الْإِيمَانِ مِنْ جَوْفِهِ 
from his heart, from amongst his bosom, his chest, the nur of iman is extracted and taken away. لا يشرب الخمر حين يشربها وهو مؤمن. A person while consuming intoxicants, while they are doing this, they are not in the state of iman. They are not in the state of iman. This is what the hadith entails. Now Allah forbid, Allah forbid, if someone is just raving it on the weekends, he links up with a few of his local brothers from his local area. And we are going out, we are going raving, we are going to jam. And we know the incidents, there are so many in the news, people popping tablets, doing pills, doing all kinds of madness. Someone ODs and dies, what happens to that person? Where are they going? Well, in which condition would the malakal mode come and extract the soul from that person? How is Iman become so cheap and so just something secondary? Something so worthless, priceless? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions, Man qala la ilaha illa Allah mukhlisan, dakhal al jannah. If only if a person once said, La ilaha illallah, sincerely, then for that person, they will have an abode in Jannah. And we are ready to barter with this Iman for petty worldly gains, temporary worldly gains. How many youngsters we've come across? They have potential, they are going places, they are doing things. One youngster, I know him very well, he had trials for Chelsea. Then he started popping tablets, LSD, trips. On a weekend it would be just a, a, a regular thing. They just start taking all kinds of mad substances. What happened? He started having hallucinations. Because that's what happens. Certain things, a body, they have after effects. They start popping these pills, popping tablets. Now he started having hallucinations. He was becoming suicidal. And now, you look at the person, and no one's business. Rehab, in and out. Someone who had trials for a football team like Chelsea. And where did they end up? And no one is safe from this fitna. Because now Muslims are helping other Muslims to advance in these sorts of things. Ma'adallah. I, Wallahi al I got called to one school in my local area. I can't mention the name of the school because there are some brothers from Crowley who are here. <coughs> but one of the schools said to me in clear words <coughs> that we are sorry to tell you, but it seems that the ringleaders happen to be your Muslim boys. Now the reason why they called me because they knew that Alhamdulillah I had a lot of students in that school. So they said that they had heard my name and there was some influence amongst the students. And they said we want you to explain to these boys. Because we see that you have a connection with them, you can talk to them, you can relate to them. And that's the, that is a really big problem of our times now. Is that these youngsters think that they can't come to the masjid to solve their problems. So yet they stay at home being victims. And only when the situation goes well out of control, that's when then the parents, they start phoning friends, family, and then finally the imam gets called finally when the person's ODing. Or the person's gone well off the track. And this is, I, I'm not exaggerating when I say this. The problem is, it's a very big stigma. These things are kept under manners, as you like to say, in our society. Mm-hmm. We don't like to spread out our business. Because it's an, it's an aib. It's something which is... It's something which is disrespectful in our communities. Something which is looked down upon. Oh, flana na putar charsi hai. Flana na putar sharabi hai. Flana na putar podri hai. Such and such a person's son is like this, such and such a person's daughter is like this. So they keep it under control. Where they ship them back to Pakistan or India or sometimes other, their home countries. We had that. Couple of people that this has happened to. And they sent him back. And they, this person was a perpetual drug addict. Where did it start off? Just going rolling on the weekends, him and his cousin chilling, smoking, rolling. A bit here, a bit there. Then they got their hands on some other things. Now, I would like to talk more openly, but we have some youngsters here. What can you say to affect their, their innocent ears, Bichari? Now, he became a victim of class A drugs, injecting his veins of poison. They shipped him back with the promise 
that no, no, we're going to look after you there. You know, we've got, we, we're going to promise. They promised in the world we're going to give you this, this, this thing. When they got there, they made him sit on a seat and they chained him down to the seat. And that's how they treated him. And for a good little while, they had to leave him like this, so the system it would leave his system. People on the floor, foam coming out of the mouth, looking like animals, like dogs. The people with iman in their heart, la ilaha illallah, foaming from the mouth, ODing. Youngsters who had the potential to drive the ummah forward. Listening to that rap music in the car, that fake gangster image. Listening to your DMX, listening to your two packs, listening to your Biggie Smalls. <coughs> yeah, DMX was a great person, wasn't he? Standing on the front of his cover with blood dropping off his body, swine blood. That's, 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 that's attractive. That's got image. That's got beauty. What about the beauty of Hassan and Hussein? What about the beauty of the people like Tariq bin Ziyad? What are the likes like Salma bin Akwa? What are the examples like Imam Bukhari? Imam Shafi'i? These great scholars of the past. Imam Shafi'i alayhi rahma when he was 14 years old, 14, 1, 4, he was given ijazah by the Amir of that time to issue fatwa and legal rules. 14! Nowadays, when we analyze the age of, when we analyze the use of this age, very rarely they may have the last ten surahs within their souls, within their within their chest, within their hearts. Last ten surahs. I got a phone call just last week. Someone phoned me up and said, "I want to admit my son into the local madrasa." I said, "Bismillah." How old is he? Fourteen. So I said, you have to accept my humble apologies. We don't cater for children that old. And may I hasten to add and mention further why we don't, is because obviously we have to follow certain rules. You can't have in a class a five-year-old and a 14-year-old. There are obviously certain rules which we have to follow. Educational guidelines. So that brother then obviously I, inshallah we, we started up an adults class, so inshallah he will attend to the, for that particular program. But what I'm saying is, where was that parent all their many years? The only desire in mind was I have to make him a doctor, I have to make him an engineer, I have to make him vakil. And that's all we thought. Where was the iman of that child, that youth? And the father grinding 16 hours a day working, 18 hours a day working. One shop, two shops, five houses. Now that child, what use will that money be when ultimately in his condition, if he does not reform his life, there is a potential that he will waste and abuse all the wealth of that father. Wouldn't it have not been better just to work a little bit less? Work a little bit less though, and spend that time on your child and give them a good tarbiyah of Islam. We're not saying you become fakir. We're not saying become mulan, put a tasbih around the neck and stand in some darbar smoking jars. We're not saying this. But at least this much, that look, I have children in front of me, I have my awlad, my offspring, those same children that come from me, they're not going to get tarbiyah from CNN or MTV. They're not going to get their tarbiyah from Fox, from any other channel. They will only get tarbiyah and buy from the parents. The mother, the father, the masjid. Now that youngster being in that age, he's not interested. He doesn't want to know. The father said, well, I tried him somewhere, but he didn't like it, so we pulled him out. Why did you pull him out? When he came to school, and he came home with a C on his card, you beat him. I'm not advocating that we do this, but I'm just giving an example. Common Pakistani people, they, they don't mess around when it comes to these things, you know. They don't spare, they don't, they're worried about sparing the rod. Even though I have my own view on it, you come home with a C, that's it. No food, no, no going out, no Xbox, no PlayStation. No allowance, no pocket money. But bichara poor Maldi sub phones up. Asalaamu Alaikum, where is your son today? Oh sorry, he had drama classes, I forgot to tell you. Drama classes? One youngster, wallah, he left our masjid, why? Because he wanted to join the Cub Scouts. Oh bai, what is going to be the condition of that child in five years time? Who doesn't even know the Faruz of Wuzur at age of nine. And we are taking them out to join Beavers and Cub Scouts? This youth, Allah's Qasam, Allah gave, it can be used in such a way. 
Imam Shafi'i, the age of 14, becoming Mufti, imagine. Imam Bukhari, alayhi rahma he wrote a very famous book by the name Al-Adab Al-Mufrad. He wrote it when he was only in a tender age of 18. A fantastic masterpiece. Now these youngsters that have the... And actually one about my Ustad, it comes to my mind. My Ustad of Hadith, Mufti Umar Farooq Loharwi, Damad Barakatuhum al a great, great scholar of our times, alhamdulillah, and we are fortunate to have such a great Mubarak person in our country. His son, only seven years old, wallahi, become whole hafiz of Qur'an. Seven years old. Now, it's, there is potential there. Wherever environment we mold our youngsters in, they will go. But if, the, you, as the, if that bachman, that childhood has been neglected, then when it comes to the youth, then it's make or break. And if it breaks there, to get back on the right track then becomes very difficult. People don't want to know. People are not interested. People couldn't care less. And you know the sad thing is? They encourage and help each other as well. I've got this bro, I've got this. Yeah, can we link up? Yeah, can we bun that? Yeah, can we pick up? Someone sent me a text message by accident, a youngster, from amongst our congregation. Wallahi, he texts me, yeah bro, have you got the greens? And I said, what greens are you talking about? Imagine, I knew what he was getting at, and I said, the only drugs I have got is that which will affect your iman and your a'mal. That's how I text in return. So then I met this youngster. And I said to him, I winked him, I said, did you get your greens? And he became red in the face. I gave him some targheeb and I encouraged him. Alhamdulillah, he started coming to the, the bayan and he started, mashallah, changing a bit. And alhamdulillah, now mashallah, the brother, he's had his ups and downs. But now mashallah, he's now growing the beard, following the sunnah. Alhamdulillah, and he's made an intention to reform his whole life. You see, because if we just give these youth the right environment, following the correct way of life, Believe me, that same youth which had potential then, it still has potential now. <sighs> don't be a victim, brothers, wallah. And my sisters, don't be a victim. It's only a little bit, it's only a minor bit. It's just the weekend. We're just doing a little bit on the side. Think of the harms. You're harming your body, you're harming yourself. <clears throat> One youngster, again Muslims. The mother had to phone and ask for help. Why? He's locked himself in his room for three days smoking. Class A drugs. And now the mother is losing, she's becoming, she's losing hope. Now what's going to happen to my son? Locked himself up. All kinds of garbage pumping their veins with. And it's a fake image brothers, fake. It's a mirage. We think we will fulfill our desires in this way. Allah's qasam, no soul ever tasted sukoon, peace, tranquility, afia. That person who went against the commands of Allah. It's not possible. When Allah mentions, Allah bi dhikrillah tatma'innul qulub. With the zikr of Allah, with the remembrance of Allah, that is where you will find peace, that is where you will find comfort. It's a fake image. <coughs> and we are watching these videos becoming even more beguiled, even more lost. All eyes on me, gin and juice. But how fake of an image? Yeah, hiring your fake jewels. Hiring your jewels, getting mugged off, getting 10% of your sales because the people who are above you, your producers are mugging you off. Yeah, I'm a big man. Ajib, what a fake lifestyle. What a fake lifestyle. And even, okay, let's just say for argument's sake, someone had a great lifestyle. For them it was really, really great and glamorous. Even though it won't be, how long will it last for? 10 years? 20 years? 25 years? Ultimately it is death. There's one ajeeb poem which comes to mind. Ya sakin al-qasr al-mu'allah. 
ستدفن عن قريب في التراب له ملك ينادي كل يوم لدول الموت وابن للخراب Oh, that person who dwells in high mansions, lofty castles. You may live in your high castles now. You may live in your fake mansions which you purchase from drugs now. You may watch your little Scarfaces, your little Nino Browns, your little ice cubes and iced teas and want to be like them. And live in your big mansions made from haram, destroying people, disgracing people. سَتُدْفَنُ عَنْ قَرِيبٍ فِي التُرَابِ There'll come a time when you will be buried and the only place you will know around you is mud and the earth. Every day, لَهُ مَلَكُ يُنَادِي كُلَّ يوم. Every single day, an angel is appointed from Allah to make the announcement لِذُو لِلْمَوْدِ وَبْنُ لِلْخَرَابِ Every day this angel is making an announcement Give birth for your offspring to die. And build your lofty mansions because they will become ruins. Wallahi, my brothers, today we need to make tawbah. We need to make sincere tawbah from today. And we need to make a covenant with Allah. Until the day we die, we won't get involved in these things. There is too much to lose. مَنْ شَرِبَ الْخَمْرِ لَمْ يُقْبَلْ لَهُ صَلَاةً أَرْبَعِينَ صَبَاحًا Imam Tirmidhi alayhi rahmah, he mentioned this hadith. If anybody consumes intoxicants for that person, 40 days salah will not be valid. Yes, we have to pray because it is fard. And man taraka salah faqad kafar. If anybody abandons their salah, then this person is tantamount to being a kafir. But there will be no thawab, no reward behind these actions. Wallah, my dear respected brothers, my elders, my sisters, anyone who may be listening and will listen to this, Wallah, if we are doing this, we have to make tawbah from today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the dua, the khaliq and malik of everything. If we make solemn intention from today, that we will definitely reform our lives, Wallahi, Allah's qasam, Allah will give us tawfiq. Two regards, tawbah. <coughs> we should go from this gathering with the intention to reform our lives. Ramadan al-Mubarak just around the corner. How sad of a situation. People are fasting during the day. But yet the same fools are selling drugs. Getting people addicted to all kinds of garbage. What is the benefit of such a fast? And what is, is so painful to say this. Well, who else is going to fast? It's a Muslim that's going to fast. And it's a fake image, these boys in their little, little, little areas, thinking they're big mans. When they get approached by proper grime, that's when you see them run away, like little boys. Our boys aren't cut out for that. A Muslim person brought up is not put, cut out for that. Wallah brothers, it's, it's, it's just stupid, it's foolish. And even if one is making millions and billions, every single pound one is making is haram. We are destroying lives. We are destroying people. Think of how many bad dua and how many prayers, supplications those mothers and those fathers have made against those people that are doing this. Do you think they can achieve prosperity in their life? We get given glamorous images on the TV. Scarface, Goodfellas, casinos. What happened to that? What happened to these people? Gunned down, shot down, dead. In the grave where now insects will eat the flesh of their bodies. Shot. Put down. Where is this a result of? Drugs. Alcohol. It all starts from somewhere and goes to somewhere else. My dear respected brothers, let's not be victims to this. Let's not be victims to this. And if we know people who are doing this, we have friends doing this, we have family doing this, exhort them, tell them to make tawbah, make dua for them. And if we are involved in doing this, as I mentioned, we need to pull out our masalla and we need to pray to Allah, Oh Allah, I am weak, Oh Allah. Oh Allah, give me the tawfiq to change my life. Give me the ability to reform my life. Give me the ability to kick these things. So just for once in my life, I can spend one Ramadan in your complete ita'ah, in your obedience. Our salah is not accepted, our fasting is not accepted. Wearing haram clothing from that money. Pushing that car, pushing that Rolex, it's haram. 
What salah is valid of yours? So that's why inshallah today, every single brother, whether they do this or they don't, two regards salah, we mean to make tawbah. Everybody inshallah will do this inshallah. May Allah ta'ala give us tawfiq. Say ameen inshallah. May Allah give us tawfiq. May Allah give us the tawfiq to reform our lives, our families, our youth, our children, safeguard them and preserve our society. Muslim and non-Muslim. We make dua to Allah, He gives us this ability. Say Ameen. Amen. May He give us the tawfiq and the ability to be able to rid this from our societies and rid this from our lives. If I have said anything wrong, it is purely from myself. If I have said anything correct, Alhamdulillah, this was inspiration from Allah. And I make dua that He uses this or rather, He makes this a means of hidayah and guidance, not just for this gathering, not just for UK, not just for Europe, but for the whole world and for every person into the entirety until the day of Qiyamah. We make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us the ability to implement 100% the commands of Allah. The way shown by Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.